Hello and welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit. Our guest today is Will Jackson. He's CEO and founder of Engineered Arts. Welcome. Thank you, Jelly. So, Will, you told me earlier you built your first serious robot, age 13. Yeah, that's right. So I was always very hands-on with materials. Uh, I think my parents gave me a workbench when I was four years old. And uh, so I, I spent my childhood making. Uh, as soon as microcomputers became available, I, I taught myself to code. And I wanted to bring that code into the world. So it was embodying that code. And I made a simple little robot that was just two wheels. Tell me what you do today. What's your work involved? Today, uh, I run a company that's now around 50 people. We have three locations and we build uh, humanoid robots. Uh, and they're primarily designed for interaction with people. And of course, humanoid robots that interact with people are an embodiment for AI. So that's the connection with AI for good. Give me some examples of what you do. Uh, so we make robots for public spaces, uh, so museums, science museums, theme parks, visitor attractions. Uh, so you can give uh, an AI a character, a personality. It can talk to people. It can entertain people. It can be very informative and a lot of fun. Uh, we also make robots that are used for exploration, for scientific research. So we supply a number of universities. There is a lot of activity in the AI area, but if you're interested in the human interface, the embodiment of that AI, uh, then there are not many choices. So we, we provide our robots for research labs. Uh, the other area we work in is uh, with corporates, and it's generally communications within corporations and to their customers using AI-enabled robots uh, to present information. Okay, thank you. And you've spent uh, the last couple of days here at the Global Summit. Mm -hmm. What's the takeaway, do you feel, for you? I th it's interesting to see so much activity and so much attention in this space. And uh, we all know that it's, uh, it's received a lot of media attention. There are very rapid developments. One sense I do get is there's, there's quite a bit of confusion. There's, uh, I think we're a, we could have some more transparency and some more honesty. There are things that AI can do fantastically well, and there are things that AI cannot do yet, and there are things that m may not be possible for 20 years. And it can get a little bit over, uh, over optimistic, I would say, the conversation. And I think uh, it's, that could be harmful. We need to kind of temper expectations. We need to look inside the black box and it would be good if we were really talking about how do language models work, how does computer vision work, how do predictive models work, and try. The difficulty is it's a very complex subject, but I think if people could understand a little bit more, they would probably have less fear and uh, make better use of the technology. Okay. Now, you said to me earlier, I wouldn't be in AI if it wasn't for good. No, no. Of what are some not. of the benefits then? I think uh, being able to interact with people in so what we're doing is building the interface to ai so it's the embodiment of ai so we're all used to using a screen and a keyboard now the keyboard its heritage is a typewriter from 200 years ago uh, screens go back to the 1940s and 50s so we're using these very arcane interfaces what if we could interface with technology in the way that you and i are talking now what if that nod of the head that you made that an AI can understand it. So what we're interested in is using AI to improve the interface between us and our technology, to empower us to use our technology in a much more simple, creative way. So you wouldn't have to be a technical guru or a genius to use an AI-empowered robot. You could just talk to it in the way you would talk to another person. So I see enormous opportunities for good there. And in particular, you're interested in the, how it can promote quality education. Education is kind of the foundation of everything. So I think education is not just knowledge. Education is discovery. It's about finding out about the world, discovering physical phenomena within the world, exploring the world, seeing it for what it really is. And if AI can contribute to that, I think that's 
a, a huge positive, can and I really think it can. Can you give me some examples of a concrete seen? example? Um, AI is fantastically good at just retrieving knowledge. So if you want uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of the world, this is where AI does very, very well at the moment. So it can hold more information than any other person can hold. So uh, as a way of retrieving information, it, it's really great. Uh, does that form a quality education in its own right? No, it doesn't. But it's the start. It can give you background. It can give you information. Are there problems? Yes, not everything that a language model will uh, produce is true. Uh, I'll give you a very simple and funny example. So our robot is named Amica, and actually it was a corruption of the Latin Amica for friend. Uh, that's the origin. And we asked the robot itself, where did your name come from? Now, we'd never trained it on this, and it made its own uh, uh, version and it said it stands for autonomous mechanical emotional cybernetic assistant okay which sounded tremendously convincing and we were but oh that's that's wonderful but completely untrue so this is called hallucination in the world of language models uh so there are dangers uh and we have to look at how can we make an AI that's truthful, how can we make an AI that's transparent, these are some of the challenges. Sure, and if I can just ca continue with that theme of the, of the challenges of AI, how do you yeah. ensure that the technology that you're developing and others is ethically safe? That is a huge challenge. So uh, one, if I give another concrete example, uh, what do you do with the memory uh, of an AI. So if we, I, we've been having an AI conversational interaction and I've told uh, the AI some personal information, or maybe not even very personal, it's just recognized who I am, where I was at a particular time. Now, I could be sensitive about that information. It's a kind of GDPR problem as well. So where is that data stored and how do we explicitly get permission? Does, the, does an AI agent have to say uh, every sentence, do you mind if I remember that? Uh, now that could be pretty tedious. So we're gonna have to come up with some mechanisms, some transparency. What we've decided in the short term is best that all data from interactions remains on a local robot itself. So it never goes beyond, uh, it doesn't go into the cloud, it doesn't get stored on a remote server. So. Uh, in a very simplistic way, uh, you could switch off the robot, take out its hard disk and destroy it and your data would be gone. So you at least you have that simple, simple mechanical recourse to, to solve the problem. Uh, that's not going to work as a scalable uh, solution. Uh, how do we protect data? How do we have good governance over that data? Uh, these are big problems and they need solving. We could talk all day, but we have to leave it there. <laughs> thank you so much, Will Jackson, CEO and founder, Engineer Arts. Thank, thank you for your time. You. And more to come from the AI for Good Global Summit coming up.